Hey guys, it's Lior here. Thank you so much for joining the reading project. Today, I'm going to read such an interesting book called The Girl Who Named Pluto, The Story of Venetia Burney by Alice B. McGinty. So let's start. Out of the classroom, down the hallway, and out the door. Venetia Burney and her schoolmates follow their teacher, leaving their British schoolhouse behind. It is the year of 1930, and they are counting their steps from the sun. A circle drawn on their classroom blackboard. 39, 40, 41. Miss Claxton leads, her words as precise as her footsteps. At exactly 41 paces from the sun, they lay down a bird seed, Mercury. At 77 paces, they place a P, Venus. Next, a larger P, Earth. After placing a bead for Mars and an orange for Jupiter, the largest planet, they stopped at 1,019 paces inside University Park. There, they lay down a golf ball, Saturn. There are two more planets in the solar system, Uranus and Neptune, but Miss Claxton tells her students that they are too far away. She will let their imaginations finish the planet walk. When Venetia and her friends return to the park later with lumps of clay for the planets, they run, counting paces to Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, all the way to Neptune. Venetia's imagination whirls, trying to fathom the real distances she has memorized each number. Stormy blue Neptune orbits 2.79 billion miles from the sun. And what lies beyond? How far does the solar system reach? Venetia brings her questions to breakfast each morning and Grandfather Madan answers as many as he can. She and Mother have been living with Grandfather since Venetia's father died, old and stately like the Oxford Library where he was head librarian. Grandfather knows that questions lead to learning, and his family is afire with learning. Along with the planets, Venetia is learning about Greek and Roman gods. When she reads about Mars, the Roman god of war, she is reminded of her great uncle, Henry Madan, a science master who named the two moons orbiting the planet. He chose Phobos and Deimos, Mars's twin suns, moons and planets named from legends. What a marvelous link between science and history. At breakfast one Friday, as Grandfather sifts through the newspaper, he starts to read aloud. A new planet discovery by Lowell Observatory. Professor Harlow Shapley announced today that the Lowell Observatory at Flagstaff, Arizona had discovered a ninth major planet. The planet, which has not yet been named, is beyond Neptune. A new planet? Venetia leans forward in her chair, another lump of clay to add to their model. I wonder what it should be called, Grandfather says, his brow creased. Venetia's imagination takes off flying, leaping, connecting the dots from science to story. She knows that this planet, so far from the sun, must be frozen, dark, and lifeless. It would be like the underworld, the underworld ruled in Roman myths by Neptune's brother, Pluto. It might be called Pluto, Venetia says. Grandfather's eyes widen. He loves the name. He tells Venetia that he'll share her idea with his friend, Professor Herbert Hall Turner of the Royal Astronomical Society. Perhaps he has a say in the decision. After Venetia leaves for school, Grandfather writes this note. Dear Professor, Blessed if my little granddaughter, Venetia Bernay, didn't up and suggest a name which to Meanwhile, not far away, Venetia and her schoolmates are buzzing with excitement about the new planet. They fire question after question at Miss Claxton. Miss Claxton promises to find out. That evening, Venetia lies in bed, her mind at rift with Planet X. In the flurry of her thoughts spins one name, Pluto. Could it be the name for the new planet? Were the astronomers deciding now? Saturday morning dawns, and Venetia and Grandfather search the paper for more information about Planet X. Mostly, though, they wait to hear from the professor. That afternoon, a response arrives. My dear Madan, 
I got your note on my return from London. I think Pluto excellent. We did not manage to think of anything so good at the Royal Astronomical Society yesterday. The professor's note goes on to say that he has written to the astronomers at Lowell about Pluto. It will be up to them to decide. A week goes by. At school, Venetia works on lessons in math, science, and history. At home, she and grandfather keep busy, reading, playing, and waiting. Will the astronomers like her idea? March turns to April and Venetia waits. April drags on. Outside, the trees sprout leaves and Venetia waits. If Venetia could see what was happening across the ocean, she would find that Pluto has made its way through the doors of the Lowell Observatory to Clyde Tambach, the shy assistant who discovered Planet X. His first choice for a name, Pluto, not only is it a perfect fit for this dark icy world, but the first two letters are PL, the initials of the astronomer Percival Lowell who began the research for the planet. Finally, at the end of the month, the astronomers vote. It's unanimous. The ninth planet will be named Pluto. When Grandfather shares the news with Venetia, she beams, her eyes radiant. Grandfather sends a check to Miss Claxton, thanking her for her teaching. With the money, the school purchases a gramophone and names it Pluto. Venetia is a hero. As Venetia grows, Pluto tilts and spins in its long, slow orbit around the sun. It shares the outer reaches of the solar system with other spheres newly discovered by astronomers. Venetia gets older and older still. Her hair turns silver. And one gray July afternoon, the day before her 89th birthday, she travels to the Observatory Science Center near the southern tip of England. She has been invited to view Pluto through a telescope, her first time ever. It's raining though, and it takes a clear sky to see the dwarf planet. But as Venetia nears, the rain stops and the clouds begin to part. A lovely sunset fills the sky. Later, the darkness sprinkling with stars, Venetia and the scientists climb to the observatory's dome where the 111-year-old telescope is waiting. The scientists locate Pluto, and Venetia puts her eye to the lens. By God, she says in an owed voice, there it is, that icy sphere spinning 3.67 billion miles from the sun, many paces past Neptune, and its name is Pluto. The End this inspirational book is based on a true story. I hope you loved this book as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See you next time.